Craftsman Saw Headaches, episode 32. Yeah, take one. This is the uh, Craftsman table saw I've been using, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. I was pretty happy when I got it, and then I decided I wanted to make a cross-cut sled. Now, a cross-cut sled is really popular these days, and I really like the idea, but the problems I ran into with this particular model uh, really upset me and decided maybe I'll never buy a Craftsman again because it was just such an irritating problem. But the, I went to the uh, store just last week and checked all the uh, home improvement stores, and some of the new saws are still coming out with the same feature that created all the problems. And so what I want to cover today is to talk about the problem and a couple of options and then show you the cross cut sled that I actually ended up making for this saw that will work with this saw when we come back. Okay, here's the, uh, here's the problem with this particular saw or this particular design. Uh, they have these features in here, and I guess we'll call them davits. I really don't know what else to call them. And really it's uh, the skill and some of the other saws are coming out with them too now, so I'm really having a huge issue. And what I ended up doing was there's uh, four of these, uh, and this creates a huge problem. Let's take a look at the front part here. And like right here, uh, they've got these in here, and when you make a you know, a piece of square uh, wood to go through here to act as a runner for a cross slide, you run into this problem. So I took the profile out of the wood and glued it up and it kept catching or getting caught or getting tight in here. And weeks of, you know, just trying to get this thing to work. And I finally gave up and I says like, there's got to have to be another way around this. And let's take a look at the options and let's see what we did. Okay, so. What I showed you up close was these little davits that are in here in these, in these areas where you would build your runners. Normally you would just cut a strip of wood, lay it in here uh, on each side of a table saw, uh, put the blade completely down, put your uh, lumber, your flat piece of plywood, whatever you're going to use, with some glue on top of that, let it sit up the next day. And you know, There's lots of videos out there talking about how to build a cross-cut sled for most saws. But those videos aren't worth a doo-doo if you have these little davits then you've got a huge problem and like I said I even grooved out and cut for these davits and I still had problems uh, the lumber still wasn't tight now so what I want to do is I'm just going to sort of jump at it and I'm going to show you that this is the first thing I saw on the internet that I said well you know what we could do that but it's still not great is this this particular saw comes with this type of miter, and the miter actually has the grooves in it to make it uh, work for the davit so that this will slide. It also helps it to lock at that point. So maybe it's a sort of like a safety feature or something like that, or I'm not really too, too sure about what happened because some of the industry seems to have gone this way with these, and now it just sort of locks it in. But you still have a certain amount of play here, and on this side, same thing. Uh, you know, when you get up in here, you still have a certain amount of uh, slop because these are made to just sort of ambiently, you know, slide through the saw rather reasonably. So you can put your lumber here and, you know, do your cut. So a cross cut sled, you could technically buy a couple of these off the manufacturer, uh, Craftsman in this case, you go to a parts piece and order just these bars and maybe nail them on to your plywood and then you'd have your, your cross cut sled. Uh, I was uh, tempted to do that and kept thinking, well, there's got to be another way, there's got to be another way. And the other possibility was to uh, take the grinder and just knock these off. I really didn't want to destroy the saw and the features such as that by taking these out of there. So I thought, well, there's got to be another workaround. And of course, more weeks went by. But finally, I came up with a solution that sort of fixed the problem and eliminated any concerns about buying these or anything. Just some, some wood and some screws and you can have a pretty decent cross cut sled. So let's take a look at the one I made. This one's actually still set up for notching out something but so here's what we did. And you can actually see well, how that works. What I did was I measured across and cut up in this case a, an old coffee table furniture, 
measured across, took an old coffee table and cut it to length and then just added these pieces, these strips of uh, hard wood on the edges, on the sides. This is oak on the sides and then I've started building. Now I haven't finished my bridge. This is uh, still, I guess you could say, uh, a work in progress item. I'll take that off just so I don't confuse anyone. This is a cross cut sled. And how this is going to work, I'll turn the table around so you can actually see what's going on, is this works now so I can slide through, put my pieces of lumber here, you know, and slide it and cut. So it's a great little cross-cut sled and it has no, there's no play in the sled, but it slides nicely back and forth. The other uh, secret if you're going to do a project of this type, even if you're doing the other one and you have the other saw, you lucky guys, you. Uh, one other thing you need to do when you're doing a cross cut, and uh, you should do it anyways probably just because it just makes everything work better, is I got some uh, basic paste wax and just put a little bit on the saw and also on the sled, uh, a little bit of paste wax. And that way this thing will slide nicely without hanging up because you really don't want anything sticking or hanging up when you're, certainly when you're cutting wood. And every once in a while you have to wipe off and maybe put some uh, more paste wax down. But the uh, simplest uh, way to do this was, was just that. So rather than using these uh, runners here, my runners are on the edges of the table. Now I've got these other two extension pieces pushed off and I can use this. A lot of the uh, skill, I notice, <clears throat> comes with the same thing. It has these little davits. So anyone with one of these brand new skill table saws that I see at the uh, home improvement stores are going to run into the same issue. I also found a Delta, same thing. It had the, little, the new little davits. I guess the industry is going that way and that's really going to create a lot of issues for anyone that has a you know, this sort of a, I guess we'll call this a mid-range uh, saw. This is not a, you know, professional or high-end kind of a saw. It's not by any means a portable cheap one either. It sort of falls, I guess, somewhere in about the middle or maybe a little bit below the middle. <laughs> And uh, there was another manufacturer's name. I'm not sure if it was DeWalt. What I could ask is if you have a table saw and you have these crazy davits, uh, please maybe post in comments below what manufacturer, you know, what model you have. And uh, I think we can all look at the same situation. If we want a cross cut sled, get a piece of plywood or whatever lumber you want to use for the uh, floor of the cross cut sled and just just go on the sides check your sled or check your excuse me <laughs> check your saw and make sure there's no obstructions or anything of course which for this one here there was nothing and it 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 gives me exactly what I need for notching. In this case, I'm going to be doing some finger joining in the near future. So in order to do finger joining really nicely, this is the sort of uh, item you want. I actually need to put a little bit of a bridge back here still, and then I'll be putting another piece of wood here to uh, finalize the, uh, the bridge, that, and then also create a nice spot where my hands will always be so they're nowhere near that blade You know when I'm cutting the lumber. And those are the things to think about. So hey, Guys and girls, thanks this week from Coffee and Tools for watching. If you happen to have one of these type of table saws and you want a cross cut and you're having the same issue I'm having, which is a big headache, that's the way around it. Out of the box. Think out of the box. <laughs> have a great week, everybody, and thanks again.